our class definition. Remember, a class is going to represent something, uh, in this case, a power saw. And so all of the attributes, all of the actions that the saw can take or, or make happen are going to be encapsulated within this class. We begin with the keyword public, which tells us that this class can be used by other classes. Then the keyword class, which tells the compiler this is what you're defining. And everything between the two, the two curly brackets will belong to the class. And then finally, the identifier. I'm using an uppercase S to differentiate this class definition from uh, an, another variable de uh, definition or uh, maybe a, a member method from something else. So that, that sets it apart uh, for me. Now, your shop standards might be different, but that's the way I'm defining this. So the first thing we want to add to this class are the attributes, those data points or data elements that tell us something about the saw. These are going to be the four class variables or class fields uh, that describe the important bits of data about our saw. They are labeled private because I don't want anything outside of this class to be able to manipulate these values. And that will make more sense in just a few minutes. So for now, we have a string saw type that's going to describe the type of saw that we're describing. Uh, double blade size, double safe length, and safe width. These are the safety zones um, on the saw where we're going to want to keep our fingers out of there. Now, these belong to the class saw. That means in order for any other part of the program, any other class to be able to access these items, you have to go through an instance of saw. Otherwise, they don't exist. Private, as opposed to public, says that those classes outside of saw cannot directly access these fields. They have to go through a certain method within this class in order to get to the fields. Now, the next thing we're going to add is something called a constructor. A constructor is an initialization method, and it is a unique method. We have the access modifier and no specific return type. This type of method, the constructor method, does not have a return type, and it doesn't return anything. It has the same name, same spelling, same case as the class name. That's crucial. That's important. This is going to be a default constructor. The default constructor, open paren, close paren, if I instantiate the class saw without passing any parameters, because there's no parameters between those two parentheses, then these are the values that are going to be initialized. So you see that my saw type, the string will be unknown. The blade size 0, length width 0. I can also add another type of constructor. In fact, I can have multiple constructors. My second constructor has a parameter list after the class name or after the constructor name. And this allows me to instantiate a saw object with specific values. In this case, I will pass uh, the type of the saw, for example, into the parameter in type, and it will get assigned to saw type. And in that way, I can control uh, directly uh, what the initial attributes are of my saw object. Finally, the last thing you notice here is that there is no main method. This on its own is not executable. This doesn't exist until I instantiate it. And instantiation is the next topic we're going to talk about. Since the class has declared the 
data fields to be private. That means that only methods within the body of the class have access to those data fields. So if we want to do anything with them, we need to, we need to provide access. And so the next set of things that we're going to add to this class definition are called accessors or setters and getters. We'll use a set type of a method, that's what we'll name it, set something, in order to take an outside value and set the, the string saw type, for example. And we'll use a get uh, uh, saw type to return back the value that's contained in that field. That's the only way that anything using this class has access to those data values the accessor methods added into the class, uh, as I just said, give us access uh, to both set the value and get the value of the different data fields. Now you're probably asking yourself, why are we going through this trouble since you're just doing simple assignment statements? You see here we go, uh, take in type the parameter and assign it in there. Well, usually it's not quite this simple. When we declare data fields to be private, that means we want to protect the data values that are in there. We don't want something outside of the class to manipulate those in an incorrect way, causing maybe our class to break. So we would control the data values that uh, are assigned to the fields uh, by utilizing these set methods. Uh, these will, you know, examine the value, make sure it's within a correct range, uh, the correct type, all those kinds of things uh, would prevent bad data from getting entered into our class. So we have a set type, set blade size, set length, set safe width, and we have a mirror function, get type, get blade size, get safe length, so that if something outside, uh, something that is using the class, wants to get one of those data values, it has to ask the get method to return it to it. It cannot directly access our variables. Finally, we'll add one simple method to this class uh, that's simply going to display the contents of the data variables. Uh, but Again, we'll be able to use this to not only test uh, the constructors, uh, but we'll be able to see how we access a member method uh, within a class when we create an instance of it. So this is simply show safe zone. It's just going to uh, display the various data values on here. stub program that will allow us to test uh, our class. We can exercise it as much as we want. And uh, all it's going to do is instantiate two objects right here. So we're using the new operator calling saw to create a new object called saw1. Same thing with saw2. This is going to use the default constructor, and this is going to use the parameterized constructor. So I'm providing the values that I want to be placed inside of that particular object. And finally, I will call saw1 show safe zone, the output or the display method, uh, and do the same thing for saw2. It's pretty exciting. And there it is. So you can see that the default constructor set everything to zero, unknown saw type, zero blade size, zero inches, zero width, okay? This one, using the parameterized constructor, this one has gone in, set the blade size to 10, it's a miter saw, and it's uh, six by two is the safe zone. I hope this helps you with your programs. Uh, good luck on your programming, and we'll see you in the next video.